So in this video, I will show you how I used one light to create these three very simple portraits. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So welcome once again to my small home studio. And if for you guys who are not familiar with the channel, this is a relatively small shooting area. This is only about two meters wide and about four meters deep give or take and as you can see i have my black background set up here normally i would just be shooting up to this area which is about 3.5 meters but i just wanted the background a little bit further back so that i don't have my camera here but definitely you could do this in an area of about just 3.5 square meters the reason why the black background is there further back so that we can get completely black backgrounds because the key or the trick to getting really black background is number one, have the light really close and the background further back, okay? So that the light doesn't get hit. So the light that I will be using is this one. This is the Nanlite Pavo Tube 230X. Now this is a four foot LED light. It's actually RGB, so it's got red, green, and blues and everything in between, but it's also bicolor, obviously, with a color temperature of, I think, 3200 Kelvin to about 6500 Kelvin. But today, I'll just use it as a 5600 Kelvin light. But the reason why I love this particular light is because of the length. It actually mimics the light of a really nice softbox with, sorry, not softbox, but a strip light. And it's got such a small footprint. You could see how small the tube is, but it gives fantastic light. It actually has an accessory called the crate that's basically something like a, like a grid to direct the light, but it's not something that I want to use today. But the other modifier that I want to use is this one. This is just a standard 5-in-1 reflector from Photix. So you've got a white side, the silver side, a black side inside, a gold side, and a diffuser inside. And it's on a backdrop holder. So there are three types of portraits that we're going to be doing today. The broadside portrait, the short side portrait, and your standard beauty portrait. But before we get into that, let's talk about the camera that I will be using today. So the camera that I'm using is my Sony A7 Mark IV with my 85mm 1.4 GM lens. The reason why I'm using an 85 is because I'm going to be doing some tight portraits and the 85mm for me is the perfect focal length for this particular shot. Now, everything that you are seeing is recorded live using this one, my Atomos Ninja V. It's connected to my camera via HDMI. In other words, everything that you will be seeing is straight out of the camera. Absolutely no editing will be done. The only edited images that you will see was the one that you actually saw in the intro and the final images, which usually I put at the very end of the video. Now, what are my settings? Right now, I'm at 1 over 200 f1.4 f ISO 100. Now, the reason why I put it at 1 over 200 was because this is how we're going to do it. We're going to be shooting it with just this light. I will be turning off this light and you will see how this one works. But in order for me to explain it better, it's time for me to call in my wife, Coco, who will be my subject for today. Come on in, babe. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. And of course, you look fantastic. And thank you. Thank you very much, of course, to our friend Mela Jimenez for virtually assisting Coco put on her makeup for today. There's one thing I forgot to ask you to do first. Mm -hmm. Um, I need to turn off my light before you enter. Okay, let me turn this one off. And I will turn on this Pavo tube. Right. Yeah, please sit down, please. Okay, so right now the Pavo tube is at full power at 5600 Kelvin. All right, so let's do, let's say the first layout first, which is your standard beauty light. The standard beauty light is just an overhead light with a reflector underneath. That's why we have our five in one reflector here. Let's just put this one here, but I'm oh, sorry, babe. Mm -hmm. Let's put it here first so that you can see the difference of a standard reflector out uh, the light with a reflector and one without. So let's do this. All right. 
But let me show them first how it looks without this one on. So without it on, you can see that with my settings at 1 over 200 f1.4 ISO 100, it's pitch black. So meaning no light coming from this is being recorded by my sensor. So every single light that you will be seeing now will be coming from the Pavo tube. So if I turn it on, let me adjust this now to bring it down facing you. Let me see how it looks like. See, that's one thing I like also about this Pavo tube. So it's, it's long enough. I can actually move it to center without having to use a boom. I can just get rid of this light. And this is the light that we'll be using. Let me see, is it in the shot? Okay, I think I need to bring my camera up a bit higher. There. Now. All right. As you can see, we can get the background completely dark because I have my light very close to my subject. The reason why that happens is because of the inverse square law. The inverse square law just basically states the closer the light is to the subject, the faster the fall off will be. So by having the light about approximately a foot away from Coco, the background being about give or take four or five feet away, the light that's hitting the backdrop is already too weak for the sensor to actually take in given the exposure that I'm gonna be getting. So I have the light focused on her now and my camera is slightly above her head which is the perfect height for standard portraits. And let me remove this one first so it's not gonna be in the shot. And that's how it looks like. Maybe I could even underexpose it a bit there. I think this one should be okay. But the thing is, with overhead lighting, you get a lot of shadow underneath, and that's why you need a reflector like this one, just to fill in the shadow. This is a standard, a very, very basic um, beauty light. And as you can see, the moment I put it there, catches the light. There we go. And that's a perfect beauty light already for me. All right, babe. Very nice. Oops, sorry, you weren't ready yet. Okay. All right, okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, one, two. Beautiful. You don't even have to look up to the light. The light's already perfect. But what you could do is you could angle your body. All right. And then face me. Beautiful. Have your shoulder this way a bit. There. And then face me. Then tilt your head this way. Good. Perfect. I love that. Oops. Sorry. Very nice. To take out my glasses so I can see properly. Very nice. And this is one thing that I like about the Sony Live View. You could already see that according to my settings, I am actually about one stop and three fourths to one third overexposed. But my Live View is telling me that I am perfectly exposed because when you look at it, this is what you will see in the histogram. Everything is on the left side. That's why I honestly don't expose using my histogram because it says here that everything's on the left side only because everything is black. That's why it has more a tendency to go to the left side. But visually, you could see that it's actually properly exposed. All right, one more, babe. Very nice. Oh, that's beautiful. One last. Very nice. That's perfect. So that's the first one. Basic, basic beauty lighting. And let's see what we could do immediately just by doing this. Look at that. I can move this this way, pull it to shorten out this side. And then I will put this somewhere here on the side of the light stand. Adjust this one this way. Maybe pull it this way. And have the light at an angle like this, right? Having the light at an angle like this will basically give us a hair light and a main light. This is now what you call broad lighting. We don't need this one anymore. This is what you call broad lighting, okay? Broad lighting basically states that you are lighting the light, the side of the face closer to the camera, which we're not. Can you get into your profile, that shot that we're gonna be doing? At that angle, a little bit more, there, okay. So you can see that I'm lighting the side of the face of Coco that's closer to the camera. That's what you call broad lighting. However, the problem with broad lighting is that it tends to flat out the subject's face. You can see that we're removing a lot of the shadows and it, you have to be very careful when you're using broad lighting because 
it doesn't really hold well when you're shooting heavy set individuals. I can shoot Coco because I like her jawline. She has a nice cheekbone structure on her face. So broad lighting will work well for her. But uh, you just have to be careful with this one. But I will show you another way to actually slim your subject if you want. But let's do some broad lighting first. Okay, babe, tilt your head away from camera a bit. Can you take out the hair from your, from your neck so that I can see your neck? All right. So, with this particular shot, chin towards me a bit. There. I'm doing a three-fourths profile, and three-fourths profile means that I can still see both eyes, as you can see here, I can still see both of her eyes, and the very end of the eye that's furthest away from the camera is still complete. That is your three-fourths profile. And I actually love it already. Can you tilt your head a bit to your right? There we go. And smile a bit. There. Okay. However, we can still do something with this light to make it even look beautiful. You can see that the light right here is extending way above her head, giving a nice hair light. And this light here, since it's a bit further away from Coco's face, is slightly weaker than this light here, therefore making the hair light a little bit brighter than that of the one that's hitting her face. However, we could do something even better. This light in particular, is soft but still not as soft as how you want it to be. We have here now our 5-in-1 reflector, right, which we used earlier. But there is something inside the 5-in-1 reflector that we can use for this particular shot. And it is the diffuser. So all you have to do is remove the fabric that's in front, which contains the, the white side, the silver side, the black side, which you can use as a flag, and of course the gold side. Let me just put that here and put your diffuser panel here and maybe put it in between the subject and the light to make the light even softer. So let's put it somewhere, maybe about here, babe. Sorry about this, babe. Let's put it somewhere about here. That's why I like this, this reflector holder, sir. It serves so many purposes, right? Now, I can still have the light above here not being diffused so that it becomes even stronger. I'm just diffusing the light that's in front of her face. But by doing that, I actually covered her face. <laughs> All right, but sorry, I can't see. I can't see the there slightly. Maybe I can just move the light a little bit there. Beautiful. Okay. Can we do the same thing? But I now, because I diffuse the light, I am a bit underexposed. Let's just move it a little bit this way, there. I am now a bit underexposed. So with this one, since I am just shooting with continuous light, I can adjust my exposure either by my, well, I'm already at 1.4, so I can't do that. I can't adjust my aperture. I can boost up my ISO, but since I'm on a tripod and it's one over 200, I think I can just bring back my shutter speed to about 1 over 100, as you can see there. Beautiful. Love it, babe. Can you tilt your head? Nice. So that's your 3 fourths pose. There, that's your 3 fourths profile. Again, tilt your head away. There, perfect. And a bit of a smile, babe. There, very nice. Okay. That is lighting the broad side of your subject's face. But technically, I didn't even light your majorly broadside. Let's do one more that I'm really gonna light up your broadside and put the light right here. Because I still put a bit of shadow in your face. So let's have the light coming from here. There. I gotta see first if I still see you in the shot, in the camera. There. Okay. And that's why I love this diffusers, because you can move the diffuser around without actually having to move the light. There. I love it. There. Can you move your body slightly this way, babe? No, I'm sorry. Twist your body. Oh. Twist the chair. Some more. All right. Some more. Okay. This is lighting the broad side of the face, the literal broad side of the face. Can you tilt your head back a bit? There. Can you move face this way a bit more? There. 
All right. Beautiful. Still very, very beautiful. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. But I'm not a lover of broadside lighting, to be honest. I like short side lighting. What is short side lighting? Let me show you. Short side lighting now is lighting the side of the face that is away from your camera. So in other words, in this particular shot, we are gonna light her from the back. There. Can you profile now? There. That's gonna give a beautiful profile. And again, if I want the light to extend further, I can. That's why I love these Pavo tubes. They're so easy to manipulate. Look at that, I just made the light higher and I got more light on her hair. Got a bit of, of highlights there. Profile, please. There. Beautiful. Um, can you give me your shoulder this way? Then profile. So now we're gonna do a full profile on Coco. There. Now we're a bit overexposed. I think we need to underexpose it a little bit. Make the light a bit softer there. Perfect. Chin down. Nice. Do you mind taking away the hair? Yeah, so I can see more of your neck. Beautiful. And you see the slight hair light coming from that raw light from on top of the, on top of the diffuser. Beautiful. But I'm not getting light here. So now, if I want, I can twist this light this way, bring it down, and get more light on her body. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. And you notice that I'm getting a lot of shadow on the side of the face facing the camera that is lighting the short side, therefore slimming the subject's face. Profile more to your right. There. Oh, don't move your shoulder. Just your face. Now for a full profile, you're not supposed to see the other eye. That's perfect. Can you blow through your mouth a little bit? There. Very nice. Now this type of light is beautiful. If you want it more surreal, you could actually close your eyes now, babe, and just do a chin down with a hint of a smile. There. Perfect. Now you could look towards here, here, towards your left side. There, you still have like beautiful, tilt your head away. Nice. Then how about your shoulder towards me? Some more, some more, there. And then your face towards there. Some more, your face towards there. Profile some more. Then tilt your head away from camera. Good. Eyes to center, there. Now when I say eyes to center, I, this is what I mean, let me show you. Babe, profile to your left, to your right, sorry, to your right. Too much, bring it back. Then eyes towards your left, towards your left, uh, towards your right, sorry, towards your right. Look at how the eyeballs are no longer in the middle of the, the eye itself, which actually makes it very, look very, very weird. Eyes towards your left now, full left. Look at how weird that one looks like. Now eyes to center. Beautiful, right? And a hint of a smile. There we go. All right, so that's how it was. Now let me turn on this light again. And thank you very much, babe. You looked amazing in all your images. And, all right, let me turn this off. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy that. That is very basic, three very easy portraits to do with just one light like this. This is the Nanlite Pavo 230X. It's a four foot stand, a four foot LED light that gives beautiful directional light already. It's like a strip box. Now I use this diffuser to make the light even softer. And at the same time, I use the five in one reflector or the reflector, the silver part of it, just to use it as a reflector when I did my overhead beauty shot. Now my side lighting, I did two kinds. One is a broadside lighting and the other one's a short side lighting. Again, broadside lighting is beautiful by itself. However, you have to be very careful because it removes a lot of the shadows. It removes a lot of the shape. 
you illuminate a large portion of a person's face, therefore technically making that person look bigger. However, it is still beautiful when you just want to create strength and if you just want to show that particular side of the face, especially if you want to focus on makeup. So makeup artists would really love broadside lighting. However, my favorite type of light for portraits is basically my short side lighting, which is my light coming from the opposite side of the side of the face that's facing my camera, therefore giving me my shadows and my highlights because I always like creating shadows, highlights, and of course my properly exposed um, part of the face to give that three-dimensional look. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.